Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! Welcome to another WordPress plugin video. In this tutorial we're going to take a look on how to create custom columns that are actually sortable and how to print our custom data in those columns. Right now I have just two testimonials custom post types that I created and if we access one of these we're going to notice that we have this testimonial box with the custom options that we generated in our previous video. Now it's time to list these options inside the main view of this custom post type. Let's access our code editor and let's access the testimonial controller.php file. First, inside the register method, we need to create an action to edit the default columns of a custom post type in WordPress. So let's create add underscore action method as usual. And the name of the method that we want to tap is actually manage underscore. And here we should specify the name of the custom post type. We're going to do it in a moment. And then underscore posts, plural, and then underscore columns, plural. This is a really particular type of method that we saw in the premium theme development series when we built the sunset theme and allows us to use this hook multiple times based on the type of custom post type that we want to head it. So let's replace this with our the unique name of our custom post type that it's in our case testimonial. And be sure to not make any typo here otherwise this system won't work and it won't trigger any error. It just won't work. The second parameter of this filter is of course the usual array where we have to pass the instance of this class and then the method that we want to call and the method we can call it simply set underscore custom columns or you can call it however you want and then semicolon at the end. If we scroll all the way at the bottom of this file let's create this method that we just hooked to the filter so public function set underscore custom underscore columns. And by default this method will receive a variable that it's actually an array called columns and these columns array will contain all the columns that are available in the default WordPress custom post type. So the title, description, the date and stuff like that. We're going to edit this columns variable and at the end of this method we have to always return the columns array as well. Never forget to return the variable that we're actually editing in the method. If we don't return the columns nothing will be printed in our page. So first thing that we need to do we need to store a bunch of things because I want to reorder stuff around. So first let's create a title variable and then we're going to store inside this title variable the columns attribute of course called title. Let's duplicate this line. Let's replace title with date. And if you know this and if you try to understand what I'm doing I'm storing the information that are actually inside here. The title and the date the two default information that I have in my custom post type. I'm storing them because if I start creating new columns automatically will be applied after the date. So I will have an order like a weird order like title, date and then all my custom columns. I don't want to do that. I want to put the author first, then the title, then another custom columns and then keep the date at the end. In order to do that I have to store those columns in my custom variables unset those columns and then generate the new one. So let's use the method unset of PHP to remove an attribute from an array and let's use columns, let's tap it of course the title because we want to remove that, comma and then let's unset the columns of course date. So if we save it and now we go back in our admin era and we refresh we don't have anything else here. You can see we just have the checkbox for selection. We have the two custom post type but we unset the title and date column so now this is completely empty. Now we can print all our custom columns without having any issue with pre-existing columns. So let's generate a bunch of custom columns. One called columns name and I'm automatically adding attributes to the columns array because this is just a regular simple array and I can generate new attributes by simply typing the unique key of that attribute. And inside this attribute we need to specify the name that is going to appear on top like above the header of the table of that column. So here I want to call it author 
name. Then I want to print the title that I removed before so I can use columns and I can reset another title attribute and I can assign that title attribute to the title variable that I have here. So I can inherit automatically all the options that WordPress had in that specific title column, which is perfect. Then let's create the columns attribute approved, then it's going to be equal to the title approved, of course, let's duplicate this and let's change to future that is going to be equal to future And then let's print lastly, columns date in order to put back the date that we previously removed. And if you notice all these name approved and future are just the custom meta boxes option that we generated in the previous lesson. So I'm just showing all the custom options that I have in my custom post type and are kind of like important to see at a first glance when we access the custom post type section. So now if we save, we go back in our admin area and we refresh, look what we have here. Now we have the author name, the title, approved, featured and date. And of course you're noticing that all these options are empty, even if inside a testimonial, for example, in the another testimonial, we have the author and the author email and the featured, WordPress doesn't automatically recognize that this column is connected to a custom option, a custom meta box inside our custom post type. We need to manually hook this column to a custom option. So let's do it. Let's go back in our code editor. Let's go all the way up to the register method and let's create another hook add action one more time and this time the action will be manage underscore and also in this case we need to put the name of our custom post type testimonial in my case underscore posts plural custom underscore column and the posts custom column, remember the column is singular. The first action is plural, the second action is singular. Let's be careful with spelling and as a second attribute of this action hook, let's specify the usual array. Let's pass the this instance of the class and then let's create a custom class that we want to trigger. So set underscore uh, custom columns underscore um, data, something like that. We're going to set the data of, of our custom columns. Just just makes sense. Before generating this method though, this manage post custom column needs to pass two attributes that we need to tap, the column and the post ID associated to that column. In order to, in object-oriented programming, pass two attributes and say to WordPress, hey, this function needs to have two attributes passed to it, we need to specify that after the array. After we close the array, we can put a comma and then say that this action needs to be triggered at ordering 10, which is the default one, and then needs to pass two custom attributes to this method. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom. Let's copy the name of this method. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom right after the last function that we created. And then let's create a new publicly accessible function called set custom columns data and the set custom columns data will receive the column, the current column that we're going through and then the post underscore ID. And that's all we need. Now we can simply copy these get data that we're using inside the render future box to tap all these custom information that we're storing in our custom post type. So let's copy this chunk of code here and let's paste it inside this method. But of course, let's change this post object ID to simply the post ID variable that we're getting. So what we're doing here, we're simply WordPress will loop through all the columns that we have in our admin area. So the author name, the title, approved, future and date. And every time we'll pass also the ID of the current post that we're checking. So whenever we have this type of loop, we can get the data that we store in our custom meta key and then get the name, the email, the approved and the future and print that data inside that page, which is pretty easy. 
One thing that we have to do though, we don't wanna print through or false or one or zero, depending on what we store in the database when we stumble upon approved on future column, we wanna print a simple yes or no. So we need to check also if other than this data is set, if it's also equal to true or equal to one. So we can say ampersand ampersand, that is basically identical of writing end all uppercase, but ampersand ampersand, it's kind of more, more elegant, I like it more. We can say that if the data attribute approved, it's identical to one, we can print a really fancy strong HTML tag, strong, not string, but strong, and we can return a big fat yes, otherwise, we can return a really simple and lazy no, this is not approved. We can do exactly the same for the future. So let's copy this part, let's paste it here and let's replace approved with featured and let's replace yes and no with actual data instead of false. Perfect. Now we're grabbing this data per column, we can print depending on what type of column we're watching. And every time this column will get passed to this method, we're gonna get the actual name of the column that we defined. So one time we're gonna get the name, the title, the approved, the future, the date. It's gonna loop through all the columns. So instead of doing an if else statement for every single column, we can use a switch case PHP method. So let's say switch and switch every time we get the column value. So every time the column value changes, let's switch. And in case the column value, it's equal to name, we can simply echo a string with the name of the other name and then the email of the other. So we can say, let's print again, a strong HTML tag and then concatenate with the name variable that we have right here and close this strong HTML tag. Then let's put a breaking line, just really, really simple. And then we can write mail to href. So if we wanna click on the email and send the email directly, we can do it because the system already it's written properly. Mail to, and let's concatenate with the email address. Once again, we're getting right here. Let's concatenate once again here. Here I shouldn't close the double quote, but I should close it right here and let's close the h tag let's close the entire link semicolon and let's print once again the email because we want to show the email like it's happening wordpress by default after this we can interrupt this case by saying break then second case in case we're getting the column name approved Let's simply echo the approved variable. We don't need to do anything because we're already here dealing with the yes or no in a fancy, fancy HTML way. So it's pretty straightforward. Then we can break this option if it's not the case. And then the last case is gonna be featured, of course. And also in this case, we can simply echo the featured variable and then break the switch. Perfect, we don't need to deal with the title, the date, or whatever other column is pre-existing from WordPress. That's gonna be taken care of automatically. So if we save that, if we go back in our administration error, we refresh. Now, all the data that it's part of those custom boxes, custom meta box with those custom options, it's part also of the default view of our testimonial custom post type. We have the author name with the name and the email fancily printed. We have the title that is the default actionable thing where all these quick actions are listed. And then if we have a glimpse if this testimonial post is approved or featured with this fancy, fancy graphic that of course you can edit. Now, the last thing before concluding this tutorial is activating the ability to sort these custom columns because if you notice, only the title and the date, the default columns of the custom post type are sortable. We can activate this by telling WordPress to sort by the data that we're printing here because by default, WordPress doesn't recognize these as sortable data. These are custom columns, cannot do it automatically. So let's do it for him. Let's go back in our code editor. Let's scroll all the way back up to our register method once again, and let's add the last hook for the episode that in this case is just a filter. We don't have to deal with any type of custom data. We're just triggering and adding a new filter. 
the name of the filter is, this is kind of weird, but it's manage underscore edit, then dash or hyphen is not an underscore. Then we have to specify the unique ID, once again, of our custom post type. Then once again, underscore sortable underscore columns, once again, plural. This is kind of a weird way of writing things, but what you wanna do, it's WordPress, it is what it is. Then as usual, let's put a comma and then let's call the usual array to pass this instance of the class and then the method that we wanna tap. In my case, I wanna call it set custom columns sortable, something really obvious and really easy to remember and understand. But of course, as usual, you can call these methods however you want. Let's copy this method, let's scroll all the way to the bottom to generate the last publicly accessible function. Public function, there you go. And also in this case, an array of all the columns will be passed to this method. So what we have to do before doing anything else, as usual, let's return this array of columns, otherwise everything is gonna crash on itself, we don't wanna do it. So we can just simply say that for the columns when we're dealing with the name attribute, WordPress should sort this by the name attribute that we have in our database. Then for the columns, once again, the attribute approved should be sorted by the approved unique meta name. And then here for the columns, it's gonna be the futured and then sort by the futured unique name and column as well. This is really straightforward because we're keeping the name of the column identical to the name of the meta key. So there's no way we could mess it up. Let's save it. Let's go back in our admin area. Let's refresh. And there you have it. Now also all our custom columns are sortable and we can sort by author name, alphabetical, the approved because we're having yes and no. It's really easy to sort for WordPress. Same thing for the future stuff. And then date and title that they work by default as usual. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you like it and I'll talk to you in the next one.